on Friday, we will know if we are officially in a recession. That's when the report's coming out. The White House is already preparing for it. They're saying that. Just so I'm change the definition. Yeah, they changed the definition bro. on us, bro. They're saying that too. Troy, two that's like when it went from 30 to 90. Yes, they, they're trying to pull a 52 fast one on us. So the recession, the definition is two negative uh, quarters of GDP. Um, now they're saying that that doesn't necessarily mean we're in a recession if it's two negative quarters, which obviously it'll probably be two negative quarters. So they're trying to, are they, what, what are they trying to do with this situation? Ease the fear of, of people hearing that yeah. word. Well, is there any validity to it? Uh, to, play, me, to play God's me. advocate, as 19 Keys would say, is there any validity to them saying, you know, because sometimes, you know, sometimes just because sometimes things are outdated or there's always, you know, outside the rule and, you know, it, it might not traditionally fit just because that's in the rule book. So is there any validity to them saying, yeah, that's the definition, but technically that doesn't necessarily mean that we're in a recession. When they put out that statement, that's kind of like when we get caught cheating as men and they were like, but baby, didn't nothing really happen. And she got all the evidence lined up, her and her homegirls and went to the Instagram and they got 22 pieces of evidence and you still trying to fight it. We're, here's what they don't want to say. I went. I was on live the other night. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg for bringing my account back. Um, <laughs> appreciate you, sir. For, um, I went and looked at every currency. African Rand, Brazilian Real, um, British Pound, Canadian Dollar, Mexican Peso, US Dollar. We are technically in a global, like if what, I don't have the term for it. Whatever is in between recession and depression, we're in that right now. The only currency that is up to date right now is the Swiss franc out of every currency on earth, including crypto. What does that tell you? They don't know how to tell the people, man, we messed this thing up really bad. We let quantitative easing run for too long. They're hiding the data that foreclosures are up 700% year to date. They don't know how to say, hey, we did too much quantitative easing and now we're trying to fix it and we don't know how to fix it. And the only way to get us out of a recession after we cause this recession is through more quantitative easing. On top of that, America has not made enough great companies. They haven't treated their, um, employees well. That's why everyone wants to quit. You know, like if life is going to be tough, let me live life on my terms. Whatever is in between a recession and depression, that's the layer that we're operating in. Go talk to, we talked about this before, any of your party promoter friends, anytime when I'm riding in Houston, traffic is a lot lighter than it was two years ago. There's a lot more commercial spaces coming up for sale. Please be careful. But if you've been studying the market, this is the time for you to get rich. Make offers on people will be hard fast and tell you why well, I won't take this deal. Give it two months. People are going to be begging to take your money and everything. That's automotive, um, real estate, digital art, everything. People are going to want to do deals like crazy. Even uh, I think Ev's first tweet that went up as an NFT sold for one dollar. It was supposed to go for one point five million. Everything's going to be on on sale pretty soon. So somebody, you guys can make up a term, but whatever it is between depression and recession. That's what we currently are. You think it's going to get worse? Yeah, I mean, the announcement in itself is big, but it's it's a big leap as, you know, these big companies are, are reporting. And so you're going to see Amazon, you're going to see Apple, and obviously mm -hmm. you're going to see Microsoft report. And so if you take those companies and you know the percentage of the S&P that they are and the percentage of the Dow, it's like, all right, well, we'll see. Are, are, is there, are, are they showing growth, right? Because if they're showing growth, it's like, all right, well, Maybe there's a saving grace. Um, so on top of that report, this this is a, this is a big week. This is a big week. But but even think about that with, with Fang. When Trump was in office, they came up with a term to say, "Hey, only five stocks out of the rest of the thousand are any good." We've been mismanaging our intellectual property, research and development, and outsourcing it for so long that we technically have no advantage anymore. As a country, we're gonna to have to decide really fast if we are gonna to continue to copy and remix everything, or if we're gonna build and be the innovative culture that we're supposed to be. So with TikTok, <clears throat> going back to that, if they get a head start on us and that becomes a preeminent, and I don't want that to happen, but if it happens, it's gonna be the 
a cascade level event. Because even if we talk about Evergrande venture capital in China, they are facing a housing market crash as well. So it's not just us that are going through it, but it's who is going to innovate. And when this next cycle comes in, who is going to be the leader? Sometimes destruction is caused so new players can be the face and the premium and the leader that was not previously there. Please, please, please be careful. Yeah. I, I, we yeah. might have to come up with a new acronym. Does, does Netflix deserve to still be in, in that thing acronym? We gotta come up with a new one. To the no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And, and I'm gonna go on record. Microsoft, um, go buy Netflix too before this recession ends. <laughs> we got, we got, we got, you know what, Ian? We gonna come up with a new acronym. Please. Um, Evergrade. Uh, CEO resigns after two billion dollars alone came under scrutiny, uh, while the company has had four hundred billion dollars in liabilities. Should we be worried about the collapse of Evergrande? Yes. What is what is that? What is Evergrande? Uh, Evergrande is the the biggest real estate developer in China. Yeah. So, um, if they go under or get anywhere close to it, and remember we was telling you guys about this maybe. I don't know, 16, 18 weeks ago. Um, one of the things that I'm looking for in the market is, of course, internationally, how they are doing. And when you start to see the China, you can go YouTube it or Google it, but China has some properties that they developed that were supposed to house a million people. And they had to move a university inside of there to fill it. That sounds a lot like 2008. Then when you have misappropriation of funds and they have a bunch of bad loans out if Evergrande goes under or collapses, the, what it will do to our market will be devastating. It will be worse than the 2008 crash. And because we owe China so much money, they are our financial parent. If they go under and they get sick, the United States of America will get a flu. It's, it's kind of like the one I have tonight, which will be better by Thursday or Friday. <laughs> so keep your eyes, like if you guys want a macro economic indicator, keep your eye on that company. Because if that falls, it's like playing Jenga. Um, if that bottom pin comes out and everything topples over, it's going to hurt the UK. They'll stay in a recession much longer. It will hurt us dramatically. And it's going to flip over our housing market. And I know people want to argue with me about the housing stuff. Foreclosures are up 700%. If inflation increases, the rates that people had before, they won't be able to pay that same note. Look how much interest rates have changed the payment structure for mortgages. We are in some serious trouble if Evergrande um, goes under. It could start a three, a four, three or four year depression cycle. Well, no, not depression, that recession cycle that we wouldn't be able to get out of. It'll, it'll be horrendous, but we're not that far from it. And the crazy part, if that's the top tier player, they've been misappropriating funds and doing a bunch of bad loans. What is two through 15? And I told you guys, go look through two through seven to see what they're doing. So when I be banging on the table, he's like, yo, shawty, he ain't acting crazy. No, I'm trying to warn you because if people are invading your house, you want me to be like, yo, let's kill us at your door. Or you want me to scream. I'm not going to scream no more. I'm going to let the portfolio talk. I'm tired of screaming. Said I was crazy. I'm beat. Silencio. But I'm telling you, if Evergrande goes under, it is going to be a contagion level event that unlike anything we've ever seen. It'll be bigger than Lehman. It'll be bi bigger than Washington Mutual. Uh, any of that in 2007 and 2008. Be careful. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>